back for the air, move aside, I can do this all night, yeah. Race for impact, I'ma stay intact, see you in the pitch black, yeah. You never come back, mama, she in the window, and I'm never coming back, mama. God has got her back, mama. Yeah, Jesco, Josh Abenheimer, this is non-fiction. Welcome. Hey guys, welcome back to the 5W's interview show. My name is Reese Sutter, and today we have another very special guest uh, who I'm really excited to talk to. Uh, we have Jesco. Jesco, how you doing today, man? Good, man. How y'all guys doing? I'm doing really good. I'm doing really good. It was, a, it was a bit of a busy day, but it was, a, it was really fun. So Jesco is a rapper from the same hometown as me, both repping that Abbotsford. Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, we met probably about two years ago. Was it two years? I don't know. Time flies. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we kind of known each other, and we we worked on a few projects, and kind of just been in each other's spheres a little bit. And uh, we finally got the chance to sit down and have a conversation about art and everything that he's got going on. And uh, he's got a lot going on. He's always doing something, it seems. Oh yeah, man. Always. <laughs> Always busy. Tight. So we're just going to push into our first question of the five W's, which is our who. And uh, I just want to know, who is one person, dead or alive, you would love to have a conversation with? Oof. Man, I've, I've listened to, I've studied rap music so much my whole life. Like, I have so many influences that I don't think I could actually choose one, but I'd say probably... Kid Cudi, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, close second, Kendrick Lamar, man. Like, I just, I just respect art so much. Like, when you really, really put out how you feel and you can communicate with music, it's, it's so cool, so cool. I, I definitely say Kid Cudi. That makes, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Because I was, I was considering asking, like, who are your artistic inspirations for this question? But I was like, that's boring. I don't want to, I don't want to ask a boring question. But uh, that. Uh, that makes a lot of sense that you'd say Kid Cudi. Like, I don't think I would pick that for you, but hearing you say it kind of matches up a lot of kind of like what I see in you, in him. Kind of like I can see where yeah. like you've pulled kind of inspiration. You kind of have like things that you guys both do similarly. Oh yeah, man. You know, um, in my beginning days of, of, of journaling and writing music, I was so into Eminem, of course, because, you know, classic like underdog story he was so angry so i just kind of channeled my anger a little bit um but listening to kid cuddy i first heard man on the moon and just the way that he was vulnerable it was a different type of way from eminem he wasn't just like you know angry and bitter and, and resentful he actually just said what he was feeling and let it go you know what i mean mm -hmm. so that's something i've carried with my uh with my art like five six years now you know, just being vulnerable, but also going hard if you want to, for sure. 100%. I think uh, that's a great way to describe your music. I was listening to it, like, just kind of getting ready for the interview, and since I'm just refreshing on all my Jesco tracks, and I was like, damn, I was like, it hits you in the feels, but also just makes you, like, it makes you bop your head. It's like, it's got, like, yeah. an interesting duality to it that I think is uh, pretty fun and uh, pretty, doesn't come around super often. Yeah, man, you know, I'm just trying to bring something to, to the city that nobody's heard. And mm -hmm. I think just coming from a perspective where you want to be original and you really want to bring your own, your own wave to it, yeah. it's honestly it's more natural than like always following somebody's footsteps and living out somebody's dream and somebody else's art. So, yeah, you know, I respect that's where I come from. Yeah, because I think... This kind of like ties into a second question pretty well, but I think as far as artistic integrity goes, uh, I feel like you are quite far ahead as opposed to a bunch of other people on the somewhat local scene, which I'll just bring us yeah. to our second question, the five W's, which is our who. And I really respect artists that I don't want to say take a stand or stand for something, but just have something that's like real that they kind of represent and kind of own and kind of are like one artist I work with quite consistently like Crescent uh, I don't want to say he's an Afghan artist but he's he's Afghan and he's a rapper and he represents his home country all the time and all the atrocities and like really campaigns for everything to like 
try and make everything better and like really preaches like his truth and I, I find it super authentic and I'm, I see you doing something in a similar vein to that. So for our second question, who, wait, no, what does representing the Lord with your art mean to you? Like, as someone that, like, isn't necessarily religious myself, like, I, I still, like, respect everything you do, and I think it's really cool, like, how you campaign and kind of, like, share it. Yeah, that's a good question, man. Like, basically, you know, so many artists, and specifically rappers now, are about just getting to the point, the destination, and, you know, just putting their, who they want to be, out on a record, it's like, you know, people can people will connect with that if they're in that same place, of course, how music and art goes. And so where I come from, like, you know, my perspective is I'm, I'm never the perfect person. You know, like, in, in one of my, like, probably two, three years ago, I don't know when I did this, song called Good. And it's called Good for a reason because, you know, it makes you click it, right? You're like, oh, look. Sounds good. <laughs> but they click it. They listen to it. It says, I feel good even though I'm no good. You know, it has that duality where I'm saying, you know, I hold myself to a standard of wanting to be a better person, but I'm, I always fall short. You mm -hmm. know, so I'm always trying to, you know, specifically for art, I'm trying to innovate and create some, you know, break some boundaries. And so that's basically my, not my mission statement, but but what I go by, man, I'm always trying to uh, open up a new part of myself that somebody can listen to and then they can reflect. So, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question, but you can keep shooting them at me. Yeah, I think, uh, I think it does. And you kind of just want to be honest and express your truth and uh, in a completely unbridled way, and, like whatever you're thinking. And I feel yeah. like you, you think quite passionately and quite... I don't want to say aggressively, but you, you think a lot, it seems, and you express those thoughts without, like, inhibition or, like, thinking twice about it. You're like, this is what I think, this is what I'm going to say, this is what I'm going to tell people, and this is what I'll stand for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. You think it's dope, and, uh, yeah, that's tight. So that connects into some of our later questions, too, but we're going to take a little bit of a oh. side. We're going to do a quick little side mission here is in... in <laughs> So for our third question, which is, I uh, kind of switched around the order a bit, which is our when, and when was your favorite memory with music? I'd say, man, like, else. Like, it's such a cool experience when, um, I'm sure you can relate to people if you, if you work with videographers, but... It's such a humbling experience when you can, you know, be sharing a moment with somebody inside of a studio, writing down your thoughts, and you, you know, you play, you play the beat back, and you say, you know, whatever, you wrap it out, and they're like, you know what, I like, I like that, I mess with your vision, I understand. That's, it's so cool, that's probably my, like, my favorite thing about music, is, you know, people understanding where you're coming from, and like, they actually know you for who you are because a lot of the time this world is so like surface level, mm -hmm. you know, you can, I can be a rapper putting out music all the time, like consistently, like once every week, people still don't know me. They might just like the music more than they like me. And so when I'm in the studio, for example, with, um, with Carta from Abbotsford, you know, just laying the beat down and like either we created or we find one. Um, and just sharing, sharing our creativity, it's so cool. It's like, it's like this, it's like the soul chemistry. It's yeah. so cool. Yeah, yeah, I 100% agree with that. It's so, your favorite part uh, is the process. You love, you just love uh, the process. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, so you, you're never going to stop making music. It's just, even if it never goes anywhere, it's always just going to be a thing you do, it seems. Dude, I mean, like, at the end of the day, like, let's just say five years from now, if I make it or break it, I'll still be like, I'll still be satisfied with what I'm putting out and how I feel. Because, mm -hmm. you know, music's like therapy, man. Like, when I started, it was kind of just, I was anxious and just wanted to try to journal. Basically, mm -hmm. that's what rapping is, journaling, um, with a creative twist. 
but I, I just see myself actually in my mixtape soon to be released I have this song called Dead Wrong and I say um, seeing myself in the mirror five years in the future I'm sure that I'll cry and people can take that however they want but what I really meant was like either way five years from now I'm going to look back and be, and be like damn you know I wasn't afraid to just to just do things even though there's always failure that comes and if you don't make it you don't make it but at least you're living a dream mm -hmm. and most rappers and musicians say you know the dream is to be rich and be famous well you know the dream is actually to be a musician to be an artist mm -hmm. you know i respect but that that's why that's what i stand by now i respect that cause... yeah i don't know it's just I don't, I, I, I don't even have like a follow up to that. It's just that I just agree with that, that statement 100%. That's dope, dude, because, you know, I can say that to somebody, but it won't translate in their brain. They'll just be like, oh, yeah, yeah, 100%, 100%. 100%. When somebody understands like I was saying, it's like, like boom, you're in the same headspace, on the same wavelength. Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, I see what your goals are. Like, even though you don't know my exact goals, my steps, like you just see the outline. Yeah, I feel like as artists, like once you've kind of gotten to a certain point in like your artistic like identity, which I feel like I have largely kind of gotten to like a decent point in, and I feel like you also have, you kind of just get this understanding where you can kind of just, sometimes you just see other people's vision and once you see it, you just like get it like that. And I feel like mm -hmm. with a lot of people around here, like I don't, I don't see the vision 100%, but like, when I was just like looking through your stuff before and just like listening to like consecutively like as many tracks as I could before this, I was just like, I just saw it. I was like, that is it. Like I see how everything connects. I see the artistic entity and like the expression that is like Jessica and Josh, like really clearly. Yeah. Which I guess. Yeah, you know, I, I often, yeah, yeah, no, I often like go back through all my music, like to the very beginning. Now, just listen to the transformation that's that's gone on and how things have, have changed and adapted. But it's always like sticking to the same premise of just of your core identity. And I feel music, it's like if you don't have an identity for yourself or you're, or you're not looking, it's not really going to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm always trying to yeah. trying to pull pieces of my, my heart or my, you know, my soul or whatever's going on. Cool. Kind of it forms the music for itself. Yeah, which is it's actually itself. the fourth question, which is our why. I switched the why and the where around because the where is a super deep question, but it did it fit. So, uh, why are you so real with your lyrics? Like, why do you do it? Like, not like I don't say no one does it. Like, people do it, but like at like the low level, not to say the low level, like your low level, but like at like this listener base, like people like don't aren't honest and like like that so like why man i just have this this like lust for life like i don't want to i feel like every day that you live being somebody else it's one more day that you have to conquer trying to find yourself mm -hmm. it's like it's like it's like a battle if you uh like being somebody else is retreating and so if you do that your whole life, you're going to be in the trenches, you know, trying psychological warfare, like trying to figure out where you're at and like why you're, why you're actually here, what, what your existence means. And really like you have to, you have to create your own existence. You have to create your own meaning. Mm -hmm. Um, you say the question again, I, I, I just like going on rabbit trails. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's all, all of this has kind of been really just one long big question, but it's why are you so yeah, real with your lyrics? Mm. Whew. Mm. Which this question also ties into the last question pretty heavily as well. So, yeah. so we'll kind of just like, this will kind of just be like a fluid long question answer thing. Oh yeah, okay. Um, I'd say honestly like, I'd say because the struggle of just everything I've been through in my life, like putting me down and getting bullied and, and this and that, everything that's gone on, I don't want to 
just be a regular, ordinary person. It's like I have this this craving to just, you know, get out there and get success, but not be defined by success. Mm-hmm. Because I can, you know, I can sell millions of albums, let's just say, but I have no confidence in like what I create, who I am. It's like why would I, why would I sell my soul for something that, um, you know, that I can't do honestly, like honestly. Mm-hmm. You know, so the, probably the reason I'm so real is because I'm just unashamed of who I am, and I'd rather just put out my music. At the end of the day, it's not actually, like, my fans. I have fans. Not too many, but I have fans. And they love it, and they, you know, they give me feedback, and they say, oh, like, I like this bar, and I like this tone of this song. But at the end of the day, it's not for the fans. It's really for me. It's, like, my therapy. Like, like this rapper, NF releases this album called Therapy Session. And people are thinking it's like, obviously they're going to relate to it, but it was his his journey. And so I'm kind of trying to embody the journey I'm going through, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. to represent, you know, my, my personal growth. And so, yeah, I'd say the why is just, just being unashamed. Which... I don't know, it's like, it sounds like such a simple thing, but when you think about it, it's like, like, that's like, I, like you, to anyone that's listening that hasn't listened to much Jesco or any Jesco or really looked at the lyrics or heard things, this guy is not joking when he says he's unashamed of who he is and will talk about anything on a track. Like, like uh, we'll get into the, the final question, which digs really deep into this. And, uh, but he, like, go listen, he, look for the examples, it's, it, he really talks about anything, and the fact of, like, not being ashamed of it, because even, like, thinking to someone like me, who I, I feel like I'm not, I wouldn't think I would be ashamed of things, I feel like I'm a fairly confident, open, and public person, as far as a lot of my art and everything goes, but even, like, me listening to your stuff and, like, like you take it to another level of openness and rawness, and like it's a it's a level that like even would make me feel nervous. And I think uh, it's a uh, it's quite unique. And I really applaud you for having the confidence or the the strength of character to be able to do. Because I, I mean, I know I don't have it at that point to be able to just be as confident to just like say what is actually on your mind in a hundred percent. And I'm just going to pull this straight into our fifth and final question, the five W's, which is, honestly, uh, it's kind of a heavy one, because I feel like it's my favorite song from you, and it's the one that kind of hits the most with me, and it kind of will tie everything that we've talked about up into this kind of last question. And I don't know if you can anticipate what one I'm going to talk about, but where is Westman? Woo! Oh shit, man. Okay, so that's, is that your favorite song? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I almost man, so, listening to it before this interview. Like, no joke, I almost cried. <laughs> Dude, that's 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 awesome. That's so cool hearing that actually. Um. So, like six months ago, uh, I was doing carpentry, right? My main job. And I had this, I was in between jobs because basically this lady pulled out of a big contract for this barn. So I was like, oh shit, man, I'm going to be let go. And I start working at this other little, West Mill, it's, it's, a, it's a mill. So I'm at this place and I'm just like at such a low point. I'm like, man, I'm going to be broke in a week. I had to pay bills. Uh, my parents were splitting up. And I had all this, like, friend issue and, like, just such an internal conflict, right? And I remember I was so stressed at work. My boss says, like, hey, man, just go get a coffee and just go out. I'm like, okay. And in the car, I just played this beat that I found on YouTube. And it's just, like, hitting me so hard, man. It's like I just freestyled all the way to get the coffee, came back. I think I did another errand freestyled like both verses in the car and I was like just felt this weight come off my chest I'm like holy crap like I didn't expect myself to like 
you know, just get it all out. Because, you know, art, you can just let things flow out sometimes. But this wasn't, this was almost just like my soul speaking. It wasn't even me. Mm-hmm. And so I, I just freestyled this and I went home the same day, wrote all that I remembered, and then just recorded it and let it get out. And, uh, dude, it's, it's a, probably one of my favorite tracks of all time that I've made. Yeah, it's just such a it's a heart wrenching track, really. It really is. It's fuck. It's like I don't know if it hits so hard for me, just because I know you and like I have some context to what you're talking about and who you are as an individual. I don't know if it's because of that or just because of your writing and your tonal expression of your voice on the song, but it just hits and like. Like, a lot of, like, people will try and rap real rap or about deep shit, and it just doesn't feel real. It feels like, I don't know, like, they're trying to flex that they've gone through deep shit or something, but yeah. know, there was something about your voice in it that just, like, it just felt so real and so kind of, like, raw emotional that, like, it just, I just made me remember back to, like, a few times, like, like times, like, a few years ago back in high school when... Due to, like, my allergies, I was struggling with, like, really big depression and, like, just, like, all of the negative emotions you could possibly have. And it just kind of, like, took me back to, like, all the super low points that you ever experienced in my life. And I was kind of like, shit, this is, like, like, it just, I just related to the emotion that you were expressing. I was like, damn, I feel that. And then you hit me or hit the audience with, like, all these real things about friends and about your personal life and about your parents. That one line, like, really hit with me home the most honestly because yeah, like right. I don't know it's one I mean my parents are still together blessed but like they've I've watched them go through hard times and like they, they've been close sometimes to getting to that point and it just like I don't know it just it, re- it was super relatable but also just felt super uh, honest and like and it's still like a really hard song it's not like you compromised going to be honest for a to make the song sound worse, it didn't. It sounds better for that. Like I still think it's honestly sonically one of your best sounding yeah. songs as well. Like I think the beat and the production and like it's still got a lot of really neat stuff to it. It's not just like an honest venting track. It still technically holds up completely against everything else. And I, I still think it sonically and everything, it's your, probably one of your best works. Dude, that's whew, that's dope. You know, when I made it. The chorus, I've had people ask me, like, what is it, what is it, what are you saying in the chorus? Like, I don't get it, I don't understand. And basically, when I did the chorus, I was talking, I don't remember the exact lyrics, but, um, I was just, it was like me talking to my mom. It was like me saying, like, mom, I have this pain, like, I don't want to go back to that pain. I want to release it. And I said this one line, like, like I see her in the window, or something, and it wasn't even about my mom. I'm talking about my about my pain. Like, I, like I I see it, but I'm in the reflection. Like I have the chance to like overcome and move past. Mm-hmm. And dude, the the song just created itself. Like, you know, I was so scared of releasing that song because just for that one line about you know my parents splitting up, my mom, my dad cheating on my mom. I was like, wow. Some people are going to, you know, think that I'm saying it just to get attention or I'm, um, you know, I was just afraid what my, my family would think, my brothers. I, I don't even know if my parents have heard it yet, but I just remember my brother telling me, like, like I don't know if you should say that in the song. Like, that's pretty, pretty deep. That's pretty crazy. And I was like, man, I just got to, I just got to get it out there because as long as it's going to sit with me, I'm going to be like, tormented mm-hmm. you know people think like, like you have to go through some, through some crazy shit like your best friend dies or then you can write about it. and that's what like rap is all about like people dying and living on the streets but i'm like literally anything can affect you in like a in the greatest way mm-hmm. you know you can just like somebody can spill a coffee on you and you can crash your car and it just devastates you it's not about like the deep crazy shit it's just about what, what affects you, and that's why I always try to be authentic, but sometimes it's my soul, my, my human condition speaking, not me. 
-hmm. And so that's what I, Westville Freestyle, it was a freestyle. Somebody, some people have asked me if it was written or not, but um, yeah, man, it was just, just about my soul, man. It was just about my condition and like really being at my lowest point. And it was all at West Mill, man. Sometimes I'd drive by that place um, and I'm like, man, it was shitty work and like I was laid off right after there, but it's just kind of a, it's a fond memory, even though it's like a, it's a mill, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, you can have the biggest epiphanies in the weirdest places. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think that, because uh, I don't know, just even thinking back to my own life, because like, I, like, I, I wouldn't take away any of the bad experiences or anything that I've had, because I feel like, I feel like the word bad experience is not to say wrong, but I feel like it's a it's a wrong way of thinking about it because I feel like it's not a bad experience. You're just saying it's bad. It's an experience, and it actually has a lot of good in it. Like you can learn so much from the bad, and I feel like that's it's one thing that like you have proven that by taking your bad experiences, not thinking of them as bad, and just like thinking of them as what they are, and just being like, I can share this, uh, and I'm going to get better for it, and I'm going to heal myself just by like the thought of that it's not bad and. Because I feel like that also happens in the song a little bit. Because I feel like the first verse, you just needed to get everything out. You're like, I have all these emotions. Take everything. But then I feel like you get the chorus. You start vibing out. And then in the last half of the song, the second verse in the chorus, you kind of like, I feel like there's a different, more confident in it. Jesco there. That's really just yeah. talking about, not to say less real shit, but being more confident and just being like, yeah, I'm me. And this is kind of like, mm -hmm. Dude, it was like, it was so weird because when I finished the first verse in the chorus, I, I literally had this feeling like, like weight off my chest, like I said. I was like, whoa, okay, now I'm going to just finish the song. It was such a relief to actually like say it and, and do it that I just had this this point where I was like, yeah, now I can talk about some other stuff. So I've, I've, had, I've gone through waves of writer's block and I'm always like trying to make catchy stuff and like rap real fast and rap real good lyrics and and sometimes it's it's you that's holding you back most of the time and so when I finally like wrote that verse and I started working on this project that it's not coming out but now I'm on this other one it was just kind of like I said an epiphany where I realized that I don't have to I don't I actually Writer's block is such a psychological thing. It's not actually, you know, you can't write. It's not like you, your physical body, your, your hand can't write. Mm -hmm. It's all in your mind, and, like, I was just trying to, trying to figure it out. And I figured out a lot of things, and one is just if you really want to move past a bad, you could say a bad experience. It, it, I just call them experience. Because mm -hmm. nothing's bad, nothing's... Yeah, there's good and bad, but it's the way you react and adapt to it that makes it a bad or a good experience. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what Westville Freestyle was, kind of just my reaction to everything that's going on. I chose to just be happy and let things flow, and I'll figure it out. I understand. Damn. Whew. Yeah, it's a... Uh, good talking about it, huh? Yeah. It's good. Thank you very much for sharing, and uh, I, I was questioning if I wanted to bring it up because, like, I don't know, like, it's it's a lot to talk about, and uh, I thought I just uh, I was too interested not to ask, and I was, it piqued my interest. Yeah, it's uh, good talking about it, huh? Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much for sharing, and uh, I, I was questioning if I wanted to bring it up because, like, I don't know, like. It's it's a lot to talk about, and uh, I thought I just uh, I was too interested not to ask, and I was, it piqued my interest too much, and uh, I feel like. Uh, ooh, one second. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so thank you so much for sitting down with us for this time. Uh, that's that's been my five questions. They were kind of all kind of around the same topic. So, is there anything else that you wanted to kind of like talk about or? Anything else you wanted to kind of like get off your chest or share or things that you got going on? 
uh, before I kind of wrap it up for us? I'd say for everybody that sees this, or even you just listening, um, I have a mixtape I'm working on. It's like 99% done. I'm just waiting on a verse from somebody. Uh, uh, that's going to come out. It's called Super 8 Blood Coaster, man. It's, it's so cool. And it has like a film vibe. So I got inspiration from this movie called Super 8 by J.J. Abrams. Yeah, great movie. Just with the cinematic. Yeah, yeah. Cinematic storytelling. And I was like, I want to integrate that into a, make it like a motion picture music album. And so coming out soon it's been a long time coming i like remember like three years ago i said i'm gonna drop an album this year and like every six months i said i'm dropping it, i'm dropping it. it just never did man never yeah. did but i had to i had to get to that point of realizing okay now i'm ready to like form my emotions and what i think into a full project it took so long but now that i'm here i'm like i got like two or three projects on the go so I percent. I'm really excited for this project in particular because not to put down any of your other work, but I feel like everything else has been kind of, not to say experimental, but kind of like, uh, I've been watching you for a few years now and I've seen you put out a bunch of stuff, but I feel like you've been testing the waters in a bunch of different areas. Most of it's been on SoundCloud and now you put one thing out on Spotify and I feel like this one is kind of going to be like a, a turning point in the Jesco career. It's kind of like a, like an album that's going to stand out and be like, this is like, not to say the first like piece of like, like that is like a whole, but like, I feel like it's going to be like the first kind of like big, like one that can be like that thing. Yeah, man. You know, I just compare it to like, like any great artist. They have all their canvases in their, in their art room, in their studio. And they have all their drawings and paintings, but they always have one that's on display. Mm -hmm. And so this is the one that like, even if it just goes on SoundCloud or even if it just goes on one platform, I'm confident that it's just going to bring people in because of the way that I'm speaking. Because man, the whole album, it just flows. It just flows. So once you hear one song, you got to listen to the second one. It's like, you don't want to leave it hanging. You just have to take in the whole experience. So I'm excited to release it. Hopefully it's going to do few numbers but i'm not i don't care if it does 100 percent. well uh once again i respect that mentality so much and uh, a lot of people preach that and say that and even myself i'm victim of saying that but i feel like 100 percent. you were i like i have zero doubt in when you say it that that is 100 percent what you mean you just do it because you love it and i think that's great so thank you so much jesco for sitting down with us for the five w's interview show uh, I've been wanting to do this one for one, for a long time. You've been wanting to do it for a long time. I'm so glad we finally oh, yeah. happened. Uh, you're all as welcome to come back to the show or to the channel, uh, or we'll link in person and shoot another music video or I don't know, do something. Uh, but uh, thank you so much for sitting down with us. My name is Mauricio Sitter. This has been Jesco, and I will see you in the next one. Let's go.